Hello students, hope you are doing well. Today's topic we are going to discuss is guava breeding. You all know guava is one most important fruit crops. After mango, banana, papaya and citrus. It is known as power man's apple because nutritionally it is rich and it is delicious. It is available. It can grow in any condition in India. That's why it is famous. So as a breeder, in this course, as we know, we are dealing with perennial fruit crop, perennial fruit crops breeding. Among the perennial fruit crops, guava is one most important crop and we should know its breeding perspectives. So next we can see about guava. We know it's botanically Cidium guazava belongs to genus Cidium. And number of species there are approximately 150 number of species in Cidium. It belongs to all these Cidium species belongs to family Myrtaceae. Cultivated guava can be deployed or triploid. Deployed guava had twin number 22 whereas triploid guava have twin number 33. The guava, the stadium guava can be of two types either pomiferum or piriferum. Pomiferum means pom shaped, whereas piriferum means pear shaped. In species diversity, there are different types of these other species and different guava like Catalanum or strawberry guava, Guinea's Brazilian guava, Montanum mountain guava, whereas Friedrich Thalanium, it is Chinese guava. So these things are important questions in ICR, JRF and SRF exam. These questions used to come. Please remember these points. You can see here the photographs of Citium Cotillianum, where is red color, where is Friedrich Thalanium. You can see these things. And this is, this Friedrich Thalanium is full tolerant. Okay. So you can see here Araka. Then this is another one, Phaeus Salonia. This is also in Metashe. Then before going to the breeding perspectives, we should know the different breeding objectives. So in case of guava, the primary breeding objectives are first one is large fruit size. We should have the large size of fruits that should be approximately 200 to 300 grams. You can you can see like large fruits have, quite, have a good market value. You can see nowadays in market that large size guava are available and people used to ask it um, and mostly people used to purchase. That is, although it is more than 400 to 500 gram weight, that is thigh guava. And whereas we need thick pulp as well as with few seeds, then flavors should be better and that the high TSS fruits are preferable. Then vitamin C content, it is always, it should be, it is prefer, that is 300 milli, milligram because nowadays production, cultivation, everything is not only for yield. We should have food security as well as nutritional security is important and horticulture is one of the most important sector to boost the nutritional security so we should focused we should be focused on enriching the nutrient content then the stone cells should be minimum number stone cell means greater cells like in ps you used to see the stone cells na? so in case of guava also in many varieties stone cells used to be there so the reduced number of stone cell it is one desirable trait then self life no doubt it is important apart from this tree should be vigorous the canopy should be properly developed it should be the plants go variety should be resistant to insect pests and diseases whereas different abiotic stress and dwarfing rootstock these are the important secondary objectives then we should know the, what are the limitations in breeding. First one is floral structures. The first one is epigynous flower. Guava flower is epigynous. And it is a hindrance in case of breeding. Whereas abundant incurred stamens are there. So there may be pollen contamination or pollination contamination. So we should be careful. Second thing is long juvenile period. From when we are raising a population from seedling, it has a very long juvenile period. There is a problem in case of breeding because we can't evaluate we can't evaluate the progeny it is time consuming okay and various techniques like marker assisted breeding and those things are yet to be standardized then cross incompatibility is there in guava like l49 or lucknow 49 apple color and bath coconut these are not cross compatible like seedlessness due to triploidy this is another big problem 
triple OD is there so seeds won't be there so obviously the breeding we can't predict the population then inheritance study is very poor now we'll see the inheritance pattern there are many low heritability characters the trait characters the um, the traits those are very low heritable like yield fruit size and disease resistance and quality attributes those things are low heritable so we can't predict whether the character trait is um, the predictability or that, that these traits will be segregated to the sub subsequent generation it is very low then polygenic polygenic traits are there like skin color and acidity then red pulp color it is dominant trait of a white and it is governed by it is governed monogenetically then red flesh it is heterozygous then bold seed is dominant okay of a subseed and another important thing is people used to prefer pink colored guava with soft seed but that is problematic in guava to develop some pink color varieties with pulp seed, uh, with um, soft seed because there is a linkage is there okay between red flesh color and bold size as you know the flesh color uh, of guava is red or pink because of presence of pigment like of him. okay then a bird set to dominant of a round so these are the few only few inheritance patterns there are lots of traits the, whose inheritance to be properly studied then we'll see the floral biology anthesis time we should know what time anthesis is happening anthesis means opening of the flower okay so it is 4 a.m to 10 a.m Whereas the peak time of anthesis is 5 am to 7 am and 24 hour before anthesis the 24 hour before anthesis the flower buds are cracking the callus that is the important thing okay in case of when we'll see the breeding techniques there also i will discuss this when the calyx used to crack calyx crack stage that's time we should do emasculation when we are doing hybridization the proper stage that we should know so before 24 hour of anthesis the calyx cracking happens this is important thing okay then anthropation start 15 to 20 minutes prior to anthesis and 80% 80 80 of the anthers set their pollen within 45 and there are reports are available in case of other but mostly it varies from 4 to 10 okay then pollen viability it ranged from 40 to 95 percent so it varies in seedless cultivar less than 50 percent whereas in seeded cultivar high pollen fertility is there then stigma receptivity two to, two to three hours after anthesis and remain up to 48 hours so if we are properly emasculating the flower then up to two days we can do the breeding. then you can see here here you can see the flower structure these are the stamens of guava okay five petals and these are the buttons here collect scrapping this is calyx, right you can see here stigma this is stigma conical shaped both set petals numerous over in so the, you can see here it's a very good clear illustrated image of guava flower next we'll see the appreciation achievements made in guava breeding so different approach we'll discuss first one is introduction you know introduction means we are simply introducing a variety to a new reason okay we can introduce from different country we can introduce from different state we can introduce from different institute to another institute so here few of the examples those have been introduced from different countries these are few spaces and these are few varieties then next approach is selection selection can be of two types as you know one is seedling selection or clonal selection right so when we are selecting from a seedling population that is a seedling selection okay so that can be done from half seed population or full seed population so can anyone tell what is half seed population if any you people are clear you can post this thing in my comments what uh, comment section that what is what are half seed population and what are full seed population otherwise in next video i'm going to discuss about this seed, seed population okay so you just remember there are two types of selection seedling selection or clonal selection clonal selection is done from clonal propagation clonal population like 
you know guava is propagated colonially it is a vegetative it is a vegetatively propagated crop it's a perennial fruit crop so when a new population is established colonially and we are finding a superior plant and we are selecting that and we are taking it subsequent generation that is clonal selection but when this thing happening in a seedling population like we found when a superior seedling then we are taking to subsequent generation we are multiplying it clonally and we are maintaining that variety that is a sibling selection okay so here you can see few of the examples like lalit sveta dhawal lalima these are all are developed from cish central institute of tropical horticulture it is located in lucknow that is the nodal center for guava research and you can see here these are parentage and characteristics have been written here then these are some another examples of selections next we'll see hybridization hybridization means here male and parent will be crossed male and female parents will be crossed so in case of hybridization it is the important stage of emasculation is important like calyx break stage it should be and as i was discussing in case of floral biology it happens one day before opening of the flower okay and this stigmatic surface is smeared then begging is done so few of examples you can remember here these are examples like in anantra's pet andhra pradesh they have developed to their in evaluation and under evaluation then in ihr bangalore or kamulya or kakirana or karasmi then in sangaredi also they have done safed chaman kohir safeda where is hisar surkha and hisar safeda two marvelous examples here you can see the photographs of or kakiran or kamulya and or kamiritula hisar safeda and hisar surkha next polyploid breeding autoploid is there trisomics are there so what is this trisomic stratigomics we will discuss sometimes then the polyploid um as i was telling this triploid ka just seedlessness and their attempt has been made but so far there is no polyploid variety has been developed like you can see here aneuploids aneuploids they have done by breeding only like triploid and diploid okay and they have identified 73 f4 hybrids there is 14 are tetrajomics and nine trisomics are there one variety is there aneuploid 82 it is a dwarf fruit stock okay tetrajomic that is tetrajomic and dwarf fruit stock. it's released as a pusa season variety remember this pusa season this also question used to come so next example approach of breeding is mutation breeding like you can see here natural mutations are there and we have to identify the natural mutations which is used to after identifying the mutation we can go like in other approaches of mutations as i have discussed in basics also like one is chemical mutation can be done or physical mutation can be done so you can see chemical mutations like different they have standardized different uh, gamma radiation physical mutations used to happen by gamma radiation there are they have attempted but uh, so far there is no success rate has been achieved whereas in in vitro mutation also micro uh, soot tip culture they have attempted in in vitro also they have attempted chemical as well as um, physical mutation mutations effect of but so far there are no successful examples Uh, apart from these approaches there are biotechnological approaches also there for improvements like somatic embryogenesis and other things but there are no spectacular examples and up to your level up to for your course uh, concern this much is important about guava we are just, this is just to introduce about different breeding approaches and breeding phenomenon of guava so this is all about you you can post your doubt inside the comment section you all are welcome okay thank you for this present hearing thank you